all about tech stocks. Are we doomed to repeat the 90s? Or do these tech companies actually know what they're doing and have they learned their lessons? Welcome to another edition of Bullhorn. Joining me today is Howard Lindzen from StockTwits. Welcome, Howard. Hello. Hello. So we see an awful lot of tech activity today. Mm -hmm. it, it's been recent, but just in the last 24 hours, we had Fusion IO mm -hmm. go public. We had Avaya file for a $1 billion IPO. We had Pandora this morning mm -hmm. expand their offering. I, is this for real? It's a supply-demand thing. I mean, the, com the these companies have been nurtured for so long. I mean, Pandora's almost been bankrupt twice. <laughs> um, so they're taking advantage of this window, and just like Wall Street does, when they got something good, they squeeze everything out. Even though I love Pandora, mm -hmm. the product, uh, I, you know, I'm a little skeptical. So if we reel back to the 90s a little bit, a lot mm -hmm. of those companies, there were so many tech companies out there, and, and the problem was 99% of them did not have a business model. Mm -hmm. This time around, there are business models. There, so are, there are business models. There's an extra few billion people on the internet, and these are very early. It's, a lot of these companies have been around for a while. They, they've, they've integrated into, you know, the brands into people's, you know, consciousness. And like I was talking about with LinkedIn, there's so much unknown about the power of the network that it's hard to value these companies. So I think that's why Wall Street is finally getting these out. I think people are in the mood to accept these. Now these companies have to right. deliver. Let me ask you one more question about Fusion IO. They have a really, really fantastic product. This this flash data storage, you can have fewer servers, it's energy efficient. Their biggest customer is Facebook. Heavily reliant on one customer, um, you know, great business model, uh, definitely a takeover play, you know, and definitely with the weak U.S. dollar, even a takeover play by a foreign company that wants to get in the United States. But that's never a reason I want to own a company. So I think definitely too early for me. Apple. They mm -hmm. had their developers conference on Monday, and for mm -hmm. the first time, they didn't say anything about the iPhone. Right. Is the, is the innovation pipeline drying up for them? Um, you know, you can't own everything. I mean, they're not overreaching like I think Facebook is, mm -hmm. but they're executing flawlessly. They own the stock. Um, I'm as bullish as ever. But Wall Street, uh, you know, on a relative basis, there, there could be something wrong there because, you know, Apple seems undervalued, and yet the street doesn't seem to care. So either, you know, expectations are going to catch up to this stock at one point. So, so this stock could go either way, but I've been long for a long time, and I, and I just, you know, I watch... You know, just my own usage of the product, and it just makes me smile. And uh, I think, just think there's lots of good times ahead still. One other, one other stock that I wanted to talk to a little outside the tech arena is is Open Table. Mm -hmm. It seems to be a really hot trending talker stock. What's going on there? The, with Open Table, I mean, the trend is still in place, but they, were, you know, the CEO that helped build this company is no longer there. Um, a little bit of the momentum has been taken out of the stock. They, they have to use this stock price to go secure the next 10 years. Mm -hmm. And I think the market's watching and waiting for them to do something because there's just a lot of talk about the product and how it squeezes the restaurant. Right. So I, I'm watching. I mean, it's an interesting story. People are fascinated by the company. and uh, But right now, it just looks like it's uh, in no man's land.